Today we are in the Mount San Jacinto Mountains. We are backpacking to Round Valley Campground. It's my dad's first time backpacking. <laughs> so it should be fun. Today should be a pretty chill day. We're just gonna hike to our campsite, which is about 2.5, 2.8 miles from here. We'll see how we feel and then might hit the peak today or might hit the peak tomorrow, I'm not too sure. Um, the weather is really nice right now and we'll have a pretty nice hike up there. Let's go. Let's go. There are many ways to backpack to the peak, but because we only had one night for this trip, we took the Palm Springs Aerial Tramway route. Tickets are about $29 each for adults and a rotating tram car takes you more than 8,000 feet in elevation to the San Jacinto Mountains. That's the ranger station. Very good. <laughs> Go into the ranger station. You must have a permit to camp overnight. We secured our dates via snail mail a few months before, so all we had to do was check in at the ranger station, where they provided maps for us and answered all our questions. Starting here, camping here, and tomorrow we will hit this peak. So you got a, like a 2.8 mile into Round Valley. When you get to Round Valley, you're going to see not much of anything. So as you come in, um, you'll see a, it almost looks like a deer trail, but a little bit wider. Got the workout started. It is 12.08. Okay. So that's a busy sign, but we're sticking right for Round Valley and the San Jacinto Peak. the two mile mark now. Our pace is 31 minutes a mile, which is not too bad. The incline's not too bad and it's shaded for the most part, so that helps. Definitely not super strenuous, um, but in about half a mile, we should be heading the campsite. Well, we're here. It's 1.34. That's the unmanned ranger station right there. Mileage, 2.2 miles. Oh yeah, so that's the water spigot right here. Right here. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm okay right now, I'm trying to find the camp spots. Each campsite is marked and the rangers recommend claiming a spot first, then returning to this whiteboard to write your initials and exit date next to your chosen site. There is also a water spigot, but this is not a reliable source of water year round, so check with the ranger station first before starting your trip. Ready to sleep by yourself? <laughs> so there's been a little bit of a change of plans. So my original plan was to hike in today camp, relax a little, and early tomorrow morning, we'll hit the peak. But we got to the campsite around two, and we thought it would be better if we just hiked to the peak today so we could just take our time. Um, so that's what we're doing now. We set up camp. It's 3.20 right now, and we're heading to the peak. So it's supposed to be about three-ish miles. We'll take it easy. Yeah. And this will be our First peak, we're bagging. We were also told that the first mile from the campsite is the hardest. So here we're gonna have the most incline gain. Whew. I'm already feeling it. Here we are at the famous Wellman Divide. We are at an elevation of 9,700. 2.7 more miles to the peak. That mile from the campsite to here, incline was definitely 
more significant than coming up from the tram but it's just so much better because we're not carrying our packs anymore wow This is the section after Wellman's Divide. According to the map, it's supposed to be fairly straight, but they say it's the most exposed part of the hike. So there's no shade. So it's like 4.40 right now, and the sun is about to set behind the mountains. So it's actually giving us a pretty good amount of shade. I think what happens is on that side, that's where the sun rises, I think. And everyone's doing this hike in the morning as a day hike. So all of this is super exposed. But right now, it's actually very pleasant. It's 5.23. We've been walking for about a little over two hours and this is the steep section. So we did the about one mile flat section after Wellman Divide and now apparently supposedly this part is supposed to be a little bit steeper and we're at the peak yay yay no one's excited everyone's tired so we're almost at the peak I think it's just around this bend maybe less than 0.1 miles to go but here is a little hut it's like an emergency shelter that someone built just in case you're up here and it starts snowing and you're snowed in let's go take a look i heard there's like bunk beds and stuff inside too oh look at that view though wow sick super blown out on the camera though Someone left a little notebook. Wait, it's full. I'm dying. <laughs> okay, what should we write? Um, Today's 710, right? Yes. 710. CJ Kim. Let me see. Why is there a brooms? <laughs> Not after the sense. Oh, wow. Oh, cool. Oh. Uh, bars, matches, pain relieving spray. Oh, ladders la up there? Ladders up here. Well, it's that mostly used by. Oh, dude, it was built in 1933. The last few feet, and I think I read that it's a little bit of a scramble to get to the way top. We made it! <sighs> Honestly, that last scramble was kind of hard. But look at these golden hour views. Someone had to steal the sign. first time today fettuccine alfredo with chicken and we got dinner here and the whole peak to ourselves, to ourselves. are you smiling mm -hmm. <laughs> we made it first peak mount san jacinto and we have it all my camera battery died here, but after dinner, we hiked back to camp and was able to witness a beautiful sunset. The last half of the hike was in the dark, but it was actually nice to escape the hot sun for a while. So 
here's our campsite. Doing a little tour. This is called the Buckthorn site here at Mount Jacinto. Um, to get here, you just need to follow post R6. And we thought it'd be pretty good to share this site. And it's really, really good in a nutshell. So you have this area, a lot of rocks, which are super awesome to lay your equipment down, keep it clean off the, the ground. You have a soft patch over there to lay your tent. Very shaded. Again, huge amount of boulders. And you can lay your tent here. Everything's generally flat and soft. And you have these rocks and stumps you can sit on. And then this is kind of like the front area. And you have this super flat rock here that you can cook on. Scarlet is doing. And then you have another flat area in the back, which you can set up another tent. I think if you came with a group of even like six tents, you'd be able to be able to set up everything. Fifteen person max. Fifteen person per max. Site. All right. So you can push up to eight tents maybe. But yep, that's our tour. This is again R six. This little guy is the latest addition to our backpacking gear. It's the platypus water jug. I don't know what you call this, but it's two liters flexible water bottle. Um, and basically, we got this like the day before we came here um, because we needed like an easier way to filter water. So we put our Sawyer mini water filter onto here, and this fills so much water, two liters. You don't need to like keep going back to the spigot to like filter your water again. So this is so convenient. I wish we had this earlier. And it's like $15 at REI, so it's not too bad. So we're on our way hiking out back to the tram now. I'm honestly really glad we did the summit yesterday because if we had done it today there would have just been so much more sun and we would have gone back to the tram pretty late but doing it yesterday we were able to have like a pretty slow morning drink our coffee pack up leisurely and now we have plenty of time to get back down so if you're planning on backpacking here i would recommend doing a sunset hike we had the whole peak to ourselves which was really nice. And we saw a really pretty sunset. Oh, and we were night hiking back. It was my first time ever night hiking and there was no sun, cool breeze. It was really cool. Hi, Buck! Hi! 